Welcome to Endurance Noise and Random Musings. It is Sunday, April 4th, 2021, and I'm your host, Andy Noise. Some uh, sad news, but it sounds like he's getting better. Howard Stern Photography, Howie Stern, is in the hospital, and uh, he's just an amazing photographer. I got to meet him in Southern California, and I've always enjoyed his photos, always enjoy seeing him at races, and most notably, some like Angel's Crest, and he's out of Silverton, and he pretty much, you Barkley Marathons, Havelina, Western States, everywhere you have seen his work and he just posted this he says life sure has its twists and turns but in the end you have to roll with it from a random blood test a month ago to thyroid cancer diagnosis and surgery less than a month later like it's one of those cancers that is treatable surgery is pretty delicate as it was near the jugular and large arteries surgery was on friday and today i was able to do a short nice walk and breathe in some fresh air and enjoy the sights and sounds i still have radioactive iodine treatment in future and that should be in should be it and then back to regular life he's still talking about doing the or 100 as at the end of july and he's hoping to do that life is short you just never know what's around the corner and so i can wish him godspeed in getting healthy and it's definitely great you know he's you know just like here's some of his frozen head images he was there just recently so he knew he's going to be getting this hospitalization there's maggie uh there's courtney and there's the three women liz maggie and courtney so just yes yeah, is when they finished up their second lap so really hope he gets well. In fact, he posted, you know, here's a picture of him. And then he's posting his watch, like many of us do. So really look forward to him getting back out there. Great photographer. Um, let's see. So I uh, always, usually every day, I have a Google Photos. And I've been taking photos since 2006. And so I often, like, go back in the past. These are some of my hiking buddies from Bakersfield. Some great photos. Uh, the gal on the right is Amanda, who I often hike with quite a lot. She's been doing the, uh, she's training for the John Muir Trail again this summer. There's my hiking club, great bunch of people. I highly recommend if you're a runner, and especially an ultra runner, join your liking, local hiking club because you learn how to hike, you'll become a much better athlete out there. And then these two ladies, Cindy Y, a couple ultra friends of mine. So as I scroll up, the big news woke up this morning, world record root chipped a guy, 104.02. She threw that down, took a half a minute off the Women's World Half Marathon record, and it was in um, Istanbul. So pretty cool, and I'm sure there'll be more details on that. Love this guy. And of course, today is Easter. I was out getting my miles, and I see this gentleman out all the time, and his name is Brent, and me and him are like the uh, walkers of the bike path, and he's 80 years old, and he goes out and does three miles a day. He said he used to do six, and uh, I mean, it'll be raining. He's out there. It'll be uh, just anything. And it's a really nice guy. I really enjoy seeing him. And I see lots of people out there being boring, getting in that routine and doing the miles. So it was really good to see him this morning. And then I saw these ladies riding their bikes out there. We had beautiful weather again today. Oh, you know, I've been talking about Candace, and here she is. In fact, it's funny that there's a group of ultra runners I know who are out there on the AZ Trail. It'd be interesting if they run into her. And she says, if day one takes courage and bravo, to even start day two is pure faith. You have to trust your body. Trust your body. Everything hurts, and it only gets worse as the hot day progresses. Big climbs, refilling water, passing many through hot curves, painfully slow progress like bodies made of glass. I don't train with a pack. This seems extremely stupid on day two. And she's kind of talking about that. And I know when I was doing my first six-day race, and, you know, of course, day one went fine. Day two is just terrible. And, you know, I've done some 100-mile races. And it took me 27, 28 hours. So I'm used to a second sunrise. But that second day, you know, I was just dragging around the track. And I remember um, talking to Jamil, who's the race director. And he's like, hey, day two is always bad. He goes, day one, everybody's excited. Day two, it hits you like a ton of bricks. And it's just miserable. He says, yeah, when I go long backpacking, day two is always the roughest. And then he says, what ends up happening is day two, you kind of miss home. You miss the comforts and all that. And then day three, it just becomes reality. And that really happened for me. And I'm sure Candace, she's pretty experienced. She'll be used to it. Of course, she's, you know, race director of Moab 240 and Tahoe 200. And I got to look it up. I can't remember the other one. So she's used to being up for days on end. And she's, of course, used to backpacking. So... I'm sure she'll be plugging along, so good to, I'll be doing updates when I can find them from her. And so I went out this morning, I needed 16 miles to get a 100 mile a week, so I did 10 miles this morning, pretty slow, just kind of by myself, I was supposed to have some people coming with me, but everybody slept in, so, 
And then, of course, this is a kind of, I've done this race. I just reposted these guys, uh, Silver Moon Race. Uh, they have one up north of me, but this one's going to be on the coast in Paso Rolos and on May 29th, 30th. Unfortunately, it's the same weekend as Nanny Goat, but with all the races getting canceled and things, who knows, we might show up and do theirs. I did theirs when it was in Reedley. They also have one in Reedley, and I did the 12 hours. It's a beautiful course, and this looks like a really pretty course, too. So if looking for a race, highly recommend doing it. Really enjoyed their race. Um, uh, saw this. I did a, some videos on him, Marshall Ulrich, talking about his um, uh, bad water, and he says... More than a month after finishing the first ever winter Badwater, I have time to reflect and write about the fire and ice Badwater experience. Now you can read it, part one, starting from Father Crowley on my blog. And parts two through four will be coming out soon. And, of course, he says, thanks to everyone who contributed to the Alzheimer's Association in honor of Mark Mace. Uh, Macy, Mace, we reached our goal. More news on that front, too. And, of course, if you... You saw them on the, uh, and it's right here, the World's Toughest Race, the Echo Challenge, and that was pretty cool. So he did it. it. took him a little over six days because he was having some issues with his muscle issues, had to take a break. And, of course, he was doing it on the Mountaineers Road route and uh, uh, that snow and ice and crampons and ice axe and all that stuff. So really look forward to reading that, and I definitely will look it up and probably do something else on it. And then I did my workouts, played some poker, got another cash, which was pretty fun always enjoy playing the old poker so and then i went out and did my other workout i had to get in six miles six miles yeah and of course once again people riding motorized vehicles on my bike path just kind of really super annoying and we also did a uh, a uh, clubhouse today so i don't know why i put that one there that's deleted boom seeing it all here real real life here Okay, let's go to Twitter. And then again, like I said, world marathon champ, Rup Chef the guy, takes 29 seconds off the world record to win the Kole Istanbul half marathon, clocking a stunning 104.02. So that's pretty impressive. Haven't heard what happened with the men. Probably will do a little bit more article on that. And then scrolling up, um, some I've been following the God guy here. And uh, there's a lot of them. He's, God's been busy on Easter. I like this one. We're out here, and we run into lots of bears. I kind of think of bears as friendly dogs. Never had problems with them, but this says, if a bear starts approaching you, stand your ground, note the wind direction, and adjust so that if you do fire, the spray won't fly back at you. Sounds like a good thing. Of course, you got to have bear spray to, uh, to do that, and I never do carry bear spray. So that's about all for endurance noise-wise. The random musings in my training, um, like I said, uh, um, here's my, uh, finally getting a little bit of sleep. You see my resting heart rate's finally going down. Um, today, my workouts, the morning workout, the afternoon workout. So I'm kind of happy to have that. Um, four hours and 40 minutes. That's about the most sleep I've gotten in the past few, <laughs> in a week's time. So I'm pretty happy to have that happen and kind of see that the past month, you know, it's been pretty bad. So I think I blame it on the Pfizer shot. It just messed me up royally. And then, of course, the working out. Three hours and 12 minutes in the morning, hour and 40 in the afternoon. Nothing spectacular. I was trying to run a little bit in those things. Didn't show up as running. And my water's at 48, but I usually pound another 24 ounces before I go to bed. Um, so, you know, I kind of open this up with the whole thing about I'm going to stop at mile 99 um, I could have went an extra mile, but I just decided, you know, it works for me for my, mile 99. So on um, my Strava, because that's where I keep track of it, it was 99.57 miles for the month, for the week, 31 hours. Uh, so a lot of time. And I'm glad I did it. I did one, another one the first month, first week of this year. I used to do this 5,000 mile years for years and years, but a little bit overboard. There's other things I want to do. So I'm definitely going to follow my first rule you know, stay healthy and be boring. Well, I'm on mile 99 Sunday afternoon here. The goal was a 100 mile a week. Did one earlier in the year, the beginning of the year, during my six days at the home challenge that I put on for some friends. But you know what? I'm only a mile from that 100 mile week, but I'm gonna stop right here at 99 miles. I did what I set out, and why not just cut it short? 
by a mile just for that. I've also found that even though it seems to be good for my head to be putting all these kind of miles, spending 30 hours doing just one thing is a bit excessive. And, you know, I want to start riding more on my spin bike, swimming once it gets a little warmer. I want to do one of these swim run, swim runs, races. I want to maybe try some Spartan races. And so, as I've been saying, ever since my heart failure diagnosis back in late April, this decade is more about how fast I can go. I've already been how far I can go. And I may never get that 20th, 100th mile or further finish. And I'm all okay with that. Just like I'm okay with finishing up this week with 99 problems, I mean 99 miles.